أعوذ بالله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وخاتم النبيين وحبيب إله العالمين العبد المؤيد والرسول المسدد المصطفى الأمجد أبي القاسم محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين الغر الميامين الذين أذهب الله أنهم الرجس وتهرهم تتهيرا ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أعداء الله من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد Respected brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh First of all we'd like to extend our congratulations and tabarikat and greetings on this extraordinary, special, auspicious, blessed night of the 27th of Rajab. This night, night of 27th of Rajab, is one of those few special nights of the year where great a'mal and du'as and azkar and nawafil are recommended. Where in our hadith, great sawab and reward has been mentioned for keeping this night awake in ibadat and worship of Allah. Why, what is the reason? What is the significance of this night? that it has such a great sabab. You see, if, if you look at in the year, we have night of 27th of Rajab like tonight, night of 15th of Sha'ban, and then, of course, night of Qadr. These are the three most important nights in Islamic calendar. Why? What is special about tonight? What made this night so important? I also spoke about it in Jum'a today and over the years we have repeated and explained to our brothers and especially our youth significance of this night. There are two important aspects of this night. I'm repeating what I said, but not that much in detail. I spoke in Jum'a today. Most important, most important is tonight is night of Mab'ath. Tonight is night of Ba'that, night of revelation, night of appointment of our Nabi 
صلی اللہ علیہ و علیہ وسلم ایز دی فائنل پروفٹ آف اللہ اٹ از دا نائٹ بیفور دا ڈے وین مشن آف اسلام اینڈ موومنٹ آف اسلام اوپنلی یعنی فارملی اینڈ آفیشلی واز انیشیٹیڈ اینڈ اسٹارٹیڈ ود دا ریولیوشن آف فسٹ ورسز آف قرآن وچ واز جسٹ ناؤ ریسائٹیڈ بائی کمیل اقرا اب اسم رب کلدی خلاق Now the difference of opinion with us and our Sunni brothers, I explained already in Juma, I will not repeat. But in a school of Ahl al-Bayt in Shia, 27th of Rajab is the birthday of Islam. 27th of Rajab is day of Islam. And therefore, brothers and sisters, one of the greatest ibadat recommended in night like tonight is shukr shukr means to thank to be grateful of almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has blessed us with the greatest favor of islam there is nothing more greater favor and ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than Islam. Tonight is night of Islam, brothers. Night of nubuwwat and prophethood of prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Therefore, we read in duas of tonight, Allahumma inni as'aluka بالتجلي العظم والمرسل المكرم. We read in tonight's dua, we all, oh Allah, we ask you for the sake of that greatest manifestation of your nur and light in this world in form of Islam. سيد العفيف والأنصر اللطيف. We ask you. For the sake of that leader who is the most pure and who has the most pristine element in the world of existence. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, carrier of this risalat, carrier of this message. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And therefore, in dua, after this short dua, there is dua in sajda. And in sajda we say, O oh Allah, we are shakirin. We are thankful to you that you have made us among the members of Ummah, of our Nabi and our Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. O oh Allah, we cannot thank enough that you made us Muslim, you made us followers of Islam, you gave us best of the deens and faith. So brothers and sisters, tonight is to reflect and remember and remind ourselves of this greatest blessings on us. Because we got it, we don't realize We don't recognize the value of this great name. Sometimes, especially in the night like tonight or day tomorrow like tomorrow, it is good to think and reflect. If we were not Muslim, what we would have been? Where we were, where our families were, where our situation was. This great ni'mat and favor of Allah. It is time to reflect and think about what Islam did to us, what Islam brought to us, how Islam elevated us, liberated us. But 
how we acted toward Islam also that is important to think and reflect. What is the situation of this Ummah today? Islam as a whole today in the world, where we stand? What is the condition and situation of this deen and its followers today across the world? How appreciative we were, how we appreciated, how we were thankful and grateful to Allah about this na'ma, about this favor, which was, you know, bestowed upon us, which was favored on us. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi ya Rasulullah. How we can really appreciate your efforts, your sacrifices. This is, of course, one important aspect of tonight. The other aspect which is more popular or more known to the public and people that 27th of Rajab is night of Ma'raj or ascension of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sallam Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Now about Ma'raj <coughs> or this heavenly journey of the Prophet, I will explain inshallah. <coughs> Unfortunately, historically, lot of disputes and disagreements are there. There is absolutely no doubt that this journey took place, this incident is part and parcel of the life of our Nabi and our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. There is absolutely no doubt about it. No dispute about it. Because Quranic verses are there. We will maybe read one or two of them. Ahadith, you know, about Ma'raj and around Ma'raj are so much that Allama Majlisi, Rizwanullah alayhi, this great muhaddis of a school of Ahlul Bayt, he says that if we compile only a hadith of Ma'raj, it will become volumes of books. It will become a huge book only containing Ahadith of Maharaj. So, more than Tawatur, no one can dispute. So, where is dispute? Where are differences? The dispute and differences are in details. Number one, when it took place. Tonight, 27th of Rajab, this is one opinion. Ramadan, certain dates of Ramadan, another opinion, and number of other dates. What year it took place? From third year after Be'ithat, or after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's appointment as a Prophet, to the tenth year after the Be'ithat, or appointment of the Prophet as Nabi and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some people say third year, some people say ten years. Again, majority of our ulama and scholars believe it was in the tenth year after Mabas an Nabawi as Sharif. Tenth year, it happened. So that is a little bit not agreed upon. But when Ahlul Bayt, interesting, please. When Imams of Ahlul Bayt والسلام, ask this question that uh, when Ma'raj took place, Imam Imam Sadiq Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.
Imam Sadiq alayhi salam replied that Maharaj did not take place once. Maharaj took place numerous times in Prophet's life. Prophet did not travel to heavens once in lifetime. Some hadiths even speak about more than 100 times. Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam had this experience of Maharaj. But then there is a main journey, there is a, that main journey which Quran speaks about it. But then repeat of that journey or experience in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that may have caused these differences of the date and year of Maharaj. Then another difference of opinion, very crucial you know, point of difference is that this journey of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took place in dream or in, you know, a waking situation while, in other words, only Prophet's soul and ruh is the one which traveled and experienced that divinely journey or no, Prophet with his, this material body went all the way to heavens and witnessed and experienced and came back. Again here, opinion of the majority of Sunni ulama and opinion of almost all the ulama of Ahlul Bayt or Shia is this, that Quran is explicit. Quran is explicit. Ahadith are clear that this journey took place with this worldly, you know, material body, not the soul. Surah Mubarak Asra, which is the surah named on this journey, Subhanallazi Asra bi abdihi laylan minal masjid al haram ilal masjid al aqsa alladhi barakna hawla. Glory to Lord who took his abd in a nightly journey, on a night journey, in journey in the night. This is all indication of one the abd. Abd is not soul, abd is this whole existence. Asra is a journey in the night. Journey of soul does not have day or night. And similarly, ayat of Surah Mubarak and Najm, which was recited just now, are, are very clear that Prophet wasallam did not go this to this travel or this journey only in dream or only in, you know, with his soul while body was still in his bed. If, if this journey was in dream or only by soul, then what is special about it? Huh? Why such a big fight and fuss about it? Anybody in the dream can go wherever, you know, can go fly and can experience things true or false, whatever, whatever. Normal people. Here Quran says, Subhanallah, glory to this Lord who took on the nightly journey his abd from Masjidul Haram to Masjidul Aqsa, from Makkah to Baitul Maqdas or Jerusalem. Does not make sense really. What is special about it if it was just a dream? Oh, no, it was not a dream. It was practical journey with the body, with the material body, with this worldly body of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the world beyond this world. Anyway, brothers and sisters, for our young people, I need to quickly repeat in maybe two, three minutes the incident itself. That one night in Makkah, 
Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam was taken by Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a different world. And that journey has two parts, quickly. One part was from Mecca to Jerusalem in Palestine. Subhanallah asra bi'abdihi laylan min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa. Masjid al-haram is in Mecca. Masjid al-Aqsa is in, in Baytul Maqdas. So that's one part of the journey. In other words, from point A on this earth to point B on this earth. That's one part of the journey. And the second part of the journey, which is more, the word Maraj is used for that, that journey, which Surah Najm spoke about it. From Masjidul Aqsa, then it went, our mighty subhanahu wa ta'ala took him to heavens. And this journey went to a place with Jibra'il, of course. And in this journey from Makkah all the way to Baytul Maqdas and from there to heavens, a lot of things happened which are recorded in ahadiths. You know, a lot of experiences Prophet had. Allahu Akbar. And finally, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went with, you know, Jibra'il to seven heavens or seven skies. On different skies, he met different people and then finally reached to a place where all the prophets were waiting for him. And he met them and they greeted him and they made salat behind him, namaz behind him. Jama'at was established. Again, Prophet went further up and Jibra'il said, sorry, I cannot come with you anymore. You have to go yourself. Even Jibra'il, in other words, was restricted, was not allowed to go further than that limit. Prophet went ahead of that. Quran speaks about Surah Najm speaks about Sadratul Muntaha. Now details I am not going. Went Kaaba Kausayna O Adna Allahu Akbar. Such a close proximity of the truth and reality. And then, of course, Prophet also in this journey experienced. The situation of Jahannam and situation of paradise and came back and narrated all these incidents. So this is in nutshell, sorry, in brief this story. Salawatala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. But now rather than sisters question is for us that what we really, really learn and understand from this divinely journey. What are the messages? Plenty of messages. It's one of those very secretive chapter of Islam and history of Islam. Honestly talking, honestly talking, honestly talking, and frankly talking. We do not understand or comprehend fully the truth and reality hidden behind this journey. Why, how, what? We don't. But at the same time, according to our size, according to our capacity, as I said, this journey, this ascension, this travel of the Prophet 
in its full scale and size is beyond our capacity. Now, far beyond our capacity. But we do understand something. And in the help of the ahadith, with the help of the explanation by imams of Ahlul Bayt, alayhimu salatu was salam, we, we understand something. And tonight, very quickly, in the next few minutes, I would like to draw your attention to some important points in this regard. Number one, number one, this journey took place according to majority of our historians, especially the school of Ahlul Bayt, alayhimu salatu was salam, in the 10th year after Mabas. Now that means that Prophet has suffered. Prophet has gone through Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the most difficult time of his life. Tortures, exile, accusation, being liar, being magician, being poet, being this, that. All bycots, worst and worst prophet has seen from the people of Makkah and other suburbs. Really, really prophet is tired. Really prophet is exhausted in that sense. And at that point, this journey comes to, you know, expose prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to different world. It was amazing energy given to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at that particular time. Some even scholars say that this happened after Amul Hosn, after Abu Talib Alayhi Salatu Wasallam passed away, after Khatijatul Kubra passed away because after passing away of these two people, of course they passed away long before 10th year, but if marriage took place more or less that time. These were the two shelters of the Prophet, biggest supporters of the Prophet. Prophet was powerful and, you know, going on because of these two people's support. And when these two were gone, Prophet was so sad. Prophet was so, you know, feeling alone and lonely. He named that year name of mourning Amul Ozan. Year of sadness. And there in this sad situation, depressing situation, this journey happens. And Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses his Nabi with this amazing, amazing favor. Allahu Akbar. Amazing, unique experience. So that is one angle. That is one very important angle. Also, now, hijrat going to take place. Now, yes, torture of the people of Makkah will not be there. But hundreds of other challenges are ahead. Hundreds of other problems are ahead. Enemies are internally and externally are there. Islam need to be established now. Allahu Akbar. This journey gave that spirit and courage to the Prophet to lead this movement to the level where we see Alhamdulillah today. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Number three, very important. It's a time that people, people, should be given solid and concrete proof of the genuineness of the Prophet, of the truthfulness of the Prophet. A very solid and concrete response to accusation that he is a fake Prophet, he is lying, he is a magician, he got a very sweet tongue, he captures and infiltrates people and influences people, but he is not genuine. Mahraj and journey of Mahraj, an experience of Mahraj, Allahu Akbar, really, you know, brought 
this truthfulness, this genuineness of the Prophet in front of the people. When Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam narrated this journey, people were in shock. Allahu akbar. Not only that, when Kufar of Makkah doubted that he's making up his stories, he never went nowhere. He was sleeping here in his bed last night. How can, in such a short period, he can go and come back on such a big journey? Huh? Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam provided some proof. Allahu Akbar. That was eye opener. When people ask how Baitul Maqdas, Jerusalem, look like this city, this place, that mosque, that Prophet give detailed description. He never been there. How he can give such a detailed description? Not only that. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke about certain caravans who were traveling toward Makkah, far from Makkah still, with certain characters and you know speakers and features. Prophet mentioned there's a there's a caravan such a far so far away will be arriving after few days or month or so. They got this, they got this, they got this, and all that. You will see them. I saw them when I was coming back. I saw them on my way back. And exactly it was proven. It showed a different feature, you know. Another very important point, brothers and sisters, please listen carefully what I'm saying tonight. This journey of Ma'raj directly proved one very important fact that our Nabi and our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not Nabi for people of Makkah or Arab or Arabian Peninsula at large. No. He is prophet of humanity. He is final messenger of Allah. How? Because this journey it started from Masjid al-Haram, which is in Makkah, but it included Masjid al-Aqsa. This is symbol. This is significant. This is you know, you know, has a great significance, great meaning. That journey of the Prophet started from Masjid al-Haram, but included Masjid al-Aqsa. Masjid al-Aqsa is symbol. You know, of all the Anbiya before, all the prophets before him. Huh? And this journey, which included Masjid al Haram, proved the point that he is Imam al Qiblatain. He is Imam of Masjid al Haram and Masjid al Aqsa. Salawat Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And not only that, and not only that, that narration which he himself narrated that on a certain position in this journey, he led namaz and jama'at, Allahu Akbar. And all the anbiya, including Shaykhul anbiya, wa nabiyyul anbiya, Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi wa ala nabiyyina salatu wa salam, even followed in namaz behind him. So all the Anbiya made namaz behind him. What does it mean? It means all the nations must follow Rasulullah. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. This is we understand. And I can carry on. But let me quickly for a few minutes take you to a different angle of marriage. This is what we understand in our own capacity and plenty. But there's a very secretive aspect 
which ahl al bayt alaihim salatu wassalam explain someone comes to imam al sadiq said ya bana rasulullah isn't allah present everywhere yes isn't allah here yes isn't allah there yes so if you want to meet allah ha huh? if you want to meet allah you don't need to travel allah is not confined to a place and a space so you need to go there to meet him so if allah wanted to meet prophet ha huh? can meet right here i have to travel seven heaven then skies hmm? this was the question from imam sadiq alayhi imam sadiq said sorry you did not understand of course and indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not limited to space he did not go to see allah allah took him listen now carefully not that he went to meet allah there is no physical meeting of allah brother and sister this whole story of mihraj has been explained to us in a way we can capture because our minds are you know confined to understanding the things in material you know measures and levels therefore it is narrated like a normal journey like flying i don't know barak i don't know this that stopping drinking having a break then moving on. this is all to bring our minds closer to you know to a journey but no the truth and reality of mihraj is different ha huh? imam khomeini rahmatullahi alayhi allahu akbar how deeply he explains he said what traveled was listen please carefully what traveled was ruh e mujarrad or that pure spirit and soul of the prophet but that ruh that which was traveling was so powerful that this material body was surrendered to that ruh traveled along with it not that he left behind no went with her. Allahu Akbar. Imam Sadiq, I was in. He says, Imam Sadiq says, Allah didn't take him to show his own. Allah, you can't say Prophet didn't see Allah Himself there. Those are there are these type of ahadis in books, but those ahadis are fabricated and fake, not acceptable. There wasn't. They, they saw Allah is sitting on a throne or a, a place or a chair. Or, no, 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 not possible. No, those hadiths are fake, not acceptable. he didn't go to see allah physically he went into a different world where secrets of this world of existence and how this world is managed and administrated was shown to him the curtains were removed the secrets were revealed which provided him that strong iman and faith allah it is it's different it's all different imam rahmatullahi alayhi so but well, let me just say and conclude otherwise this discussion will become too long imam rahmatullahi alayhi as i said he said ruh went but ruh was so powerful body followed with that ruh body also went went from this world and traveled to the world of aql and in the world of aql and interact jibril was with him and then from waqal he went little bit ahead which was beyond aql and intellect jibril said no my limits is aql as remember ha huh? malaika are what uqule mujarrada ha huh? they are pure intellects so malaika ke can't go further than that then he traveled on the horizon as he say ufaq ahadiyat on the horizon of unity then he crossed to alam e lahu to jabrut and then he crossed of course uh, to of course allahu akbar fanaw ilahi qurb maqam ilahi allahu akbar 
I, I said, but very difficult and very, you know, deep discussion there. Nobody can reach to this. This is this is this is a journey explained to us in a material way, just to bring our minds close to this. But what is behind that is something else. Imam Rahmatullah says something very beautifully, and let me say and finish. He say, Prophet brought so much back from Maharaj. But what was the most important gift of the Prophet which he brought from Maharaj? Can anybody tell me? Huh? Salat, Allahu Akbar. Imam says, why Salat is the best gift and outcome of Maharaj? You know why? Because Salat is a Salato Marajul Mu'min. Because Salat, Allahu Akbar, is, as he said, manifestation of that journey and that travel toward Maqame Fanawe Ilahi. He says, all these actions in namaz from niyyat to qiyam to qood to again qiyam to sujood and qood and sujood all that oh, his book Allahu Akbar Imam Rahmatullah in his book Sirru Salat or Secret of Prayers he explains that is the hadith which he makes it as a headline Salatu Marajul Mu'min. Salat is basically, my brothers, manifestation. You know what we call it nowadays a term, infographic. Huh? They put information in form of graphics, you know, like a, like a chart. Huh? So freely and frankly, a little bit, I, if I want to translate, Salat is basically infographic of Maharaj, of this journey. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. May Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq. Of course. Very, as I said, the secrets are too much. Allahu Akbar. Explanations are too much. Hadith of Maharaj, which is a long hadith. So, oh, oh. Opens up the horizons, Allahu Akbar, that secrets. May Almighty Allah subhanahu wa akhlaq, Allahu Akbar, manaviyat, what Prophet saw in Jahannam, for example, what Prophet saw in paradise. And can I say something which Imam Sadiq said, that in every journey of Maharaj, listen please carefully, in every journey of Maharaj, because we said numerous journeys of Maharaj took place. Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa about all the fara'is, all the farz, all the compulsory and obligatory institution like salat, like hajj, like zakat, and so on and so on. Imam said, but nothing was emphasized more than Vilayat of Mawla Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib and Imams of Ahl al-Bayt alayhim as-salatu as May Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to understand a little bit Maharaj to reflect on our relationship with Maharaj May Almighty grant us tawfiq to take this namaz really a tool really to travel toward maqam al qurb to maqam of closeness and proximity of Allah. Of course, no one other than Prophet can reach to that real maqam al qurb of fana ilahi. No one. No one. Ahadi. But person can try to get closer, Almighty, grant us that tawfiq. 
by purification of our soul and our kalb and our minds and our hearts to travel this journey, to take this journey. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.